Time is 934 now. Between 1979 and 1981, 28 black children and young adults were killed in Atlanta. It was a tragic pattern. They disappear and their bodies were turn up in the woods. Another young boy was found dead. The body was of a black teenager. He is the 16th victim to die by asphyxiation. He's shrewd, he's methodical, he's clean, he's neat. Our killer has an insatiable appetite for the news. Our investigation is continuing until we can set eyes on him. All those murders are the focus of the true crime podcast, Atlanta Monster, created by Payne Lindsay and Donald Albright. So I want to welcome both of you to Good Day. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. Glad morning. you're here. Yeah, good to see you. You were with us about this time last about year. About a year ago. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Okay, it's worth mentioning, too, that this was number one on Apple Podcasts for six straight weeks. So there's obviously a lot of interest when it comes to this case. Congrats on that, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, pretty big Appreciate deal. That. So what was it that drew both of you into, uh, into digging back into this story? Well, you actually told me about the story. Yeah. So so um, I had grown up just hearing about this story, um, and it was something that we knew we wanted to do a different type of case uh, after Up and Vanish season one. And I just told Payne about the story and said, you know, check this out. Let me know what you think. And he did some research on it and was intrigued with so many, how many questions were still unanswered after so long. So we mm -hmm. ended up trying to tackle it and see what we could find out. Yeah, and, and tackling it, you did. Jumped right in. And one of the things that you were able to do was interview Wayne Williams, which ended up being uh, quite the process, even just getting to the point of, of being able to interview him. You know, you talk about that confirmation number and, okay. and just you, you kind of let that play out and see what it was like. So how was the process and, and what did he have to say about the case? Um, it was a complicated process. Complicated, that's a good way it's, to put it. It yeah. still is. Um, I mean, there's no uh, convenient phone system in prison. You know, mm -hmm. it's all monitored, it's all these hoops you have to jump through. But I uh, finally got in contact with Wayne and been talking to him now for a few months. But he told me from day one that all he wants to do is tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a chance to tell the truth because all the different families I've talked to, they've, everyone has told me that they don't think Wayne did it. And it's kind of mind blowing to me. So there's gotta be a reason for that. And so that reason alone was enough for me to give Wayne a chance to, I guess, just tell his side of the story. You know, something else that he talks about is wanting, wanting younger people to, to learn from him. So, so what does he mean? Does he mean just in terms of decisions that he's made or, or in learning more about the case? Where was he going with that? I think he means it's been 30 plus years now. Um, I had never heard of this story, believe it or not. And there's other people, I'm 30 years old, I was born in 87. Mm -hmm. There's other people my age and younger who have never heard this story. So I think Wayne probably wants people who have yeah. a clean slate and just can look at this objectively, a, a different generation to take a look at this case. Yeah, there's, there's really two divides in this case. There's a generational divide and a racial mm -hmm. divide. Mm -hmm. And you know we wanted to kind of explore both of those and try to see what kind of common ground we could bring everyone to to have a real discussion about it. Well, and going back to that too, part of understanding this case is understanding what the racial climate was like back in the late 70s, early 80s in Atlanta. So how did that factor into to the case? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at uh, Atlanta 1980, you're only 15 years removed from civil rights legislation. You have your first uh, black mayor, first black police chief, and the city's already divided racially. So when these kids start to, you know, turn up missing, I mean, go missing and turn up uh, murdered, it just, you know, really set the city apart even further. So it affected everything. It affected how, you know, parents raised their kids for generations, you know, to come after that. So it was a major part of this case. One of the things that, that you did was you, you recreated the bridge scene, which is ultimately what, what brought Wayne down. And of course, he's serving two life sentences right, right. now. So, so what did you learn through, through piecing those, pe the, uh, those parts of it back together? Well, the bridge is super important. That's where they caught Wayne Williams. Mm -hmm. And the recruits that were under the bridge, the police recruits, said they heard a splash. And the thing was is that it was only one recruit who said they heard a splash. And we had this thought one day about how loud would a body be hitting the water like that? Mm -hmm. And why didn't multiple people hear it? Because mm -hmm. we just thought that it's louder than a beaver tail. How loud could it be? So we literally went out to test it just to see how loud it actually was. Turns out, I mean, this is all just our opinion, but turns out it's pretty loud. And it, it makes no sense that only one police recruit could have heard the splash unless either 
A, they were sleeping or something else was going on here. Yeah. I mean, that just proves that you're willing to go out and to, and to really dig into this case. You know, you talk yeah. about recreating scenes like that, but it's also part of the reason I think people are so passionate on both sides of this. You know, yes, he did it and no, he didn't do it. So uh, what have, what's been the response that, that listeners have given you from, from hearing the podcast, learning more about the case? Yeah, I think um, mixed response as far as, like you said, there's those two sides. But I think once we dig deeper into, you know, really, what do you believe? Some people on the, on the side, they, oh, he's completely innocent. Then others know he's completely guilty. But truthfully, no one really believes that he alone committed all these murders. So mm -hmm. if we can at least agree on a few things, then we can come and have a real conversation about getting justice for all of these victims, not just lumping them all together and just pushing this aside and say, hey, we've solved it, this is now over. Mm -hmm. It's time to really you know, dig this thing back up and get some real justice and closure for these families. And part of the way that you're hoping to do that is asking people to come forward who have information. But want to quickly mention this too. You came in last year about this time talking about Tara Grinstead's mm -hmm. case. And so that has has led you into to what you're doing right now. But but what else are you are you working on? Any big news for us? Um, a bunch of things. But um, obviously this podcast is mid season right now. We have mm -hmm. uh, three episodes left. So we're still trucking along with this project. Um, but we have some other things working. We um, have a, a TV show in development um, based on Up and Vanish, yeah. and it's on Oxygen Network, so we're working on that. And um, also some other podcast ideas coming up, and also Up and Vanish season two of yep. the podcast on a new summer. case. Yep. yep. So staying busy. Definitely. <laughs> staying busy. <laughs> yeah. yep. Racking up those listeners, too. I will tell you, when y'all were coming in today, there were a lot of people who listened to the podcast that were very, very excited. In here? Uh, in here. Yeah, very, very cool. excited to awesome. have both of you here. So we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. And appreciate updating it. us on all your work. Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Us. New episodes of Atlanta Monster drop every Friday on Apple Podcasts. Stay with us. Good Days Back right after this.